Hello everyone, this is Palmy for JoshuaCasper.com, and today we're going to have a look at the Super Audio Cart by Impact Soundworks. And it sounds a little bit like this. Either way. I'll ask Josh to put like the full link for the entire thing in the description so you can listen to it if you really care about what is in there. Either way, I'll uh, give you a quick overview of how to use it. In general, you just click it on. Boop. You can load up things in here. I generally only use one layer at a time. Just usually a little bit more easier. Especially since uh, every now and then in the drum kits, the sample will be really, really loud for no reason. Like especially hats and stuff. That's why you also see like two drum tracks in here. You'll get these eight categories. There's just a bunch of patches in here. Just for everything, like pulses. This is the general like chip tuny thing. But even Tom's kicks separate. But if you just go across, you've got all kinds of patches. Even like full chords. There's also a thing called uh, song chops. Yeah, they're here. These are really interesting because they give you like that sort of like Final Fantasy, really low 16 bit kind of vibe which it makes a nice use for like boss battle kind of themes most of them do not sustain as far as i'm aware see they just shut off after a little bit which is a little bit of a shame but old game systems only had so much memory so it emulates that beyond that more interesting things to look at let's take a patch real quick yeah, that's good. We'll go into the control panel. If you want to filter it, you can just click here, grab a filter, adjust the cutoff here. But in general, you won't use as much unless there's some mistakes, which I'll get into at the end in the sampling, because sadly, it's not a perfect library. But if you go into the ARP section here, if you just play it right now, it doesn't work yet because you need to turn it on by clicking on the ARP thing and the light will go on. And you'll get just have under this preset management window. So just get all these articulations. And if you go here, especially like the octave 64s, you get like this really chip tuny articulations, like which comes out a lot better if you use a pulse. But beyond that, you also just have your full ARPs and your major chords, minor chords. There's a lot of different things you can do by just messing with these controls real quick and then going here and like messing with the pitch, the volume, length. You can do a lot of things there. It's a really powerful arpeggiator with a lot of options, which I don't have enough time in this video to go through, sadly, but the presets in here will get you started very, very well. And, and that's really all you need to know about it. It's just pick your patch, click on the machine you want to use, go in here, click what you need, and maybe go into the tab, use the ARP. And then lastly, you might want to use a little bit of SNES verb in the effects. All the other effects are just the regular contact effects, so not too big of a deal. This nest verb is nice. Gives you like nice retro vibe. They also have this separately as a plugin. So if you ever want to use it, you can get that too. Then you also have the mod matrix, which if you click out here, this generally just adjusts the release and the uh, attack, which in this library, it's not very, very useful. You can use it to make like a little fade on like ARPs. That's like the main use 
I say it has, but in general, like you can see it's like the mod X, mod Y, it's the modulation depth, volume, ADSR, attack and release. But I, I would say that's uh it's already mapped really well. Like give your vibrato. With ARP it doesn't work that well. Let's turn that off real quick. Uh in our, oh wait, can you just turn it off there? This works as you intended to. It's exactly the same setup as Massive has in terms of like mod wheel and vibrato. This, this does what it advertises it does. It's very easy to use. This gives you all the retro samples very easily. It's definitely recommended for like everyone who doesn't have extensive library or doesn't know Family Tracker yet. If you already know Family Tracker and have a like extensive library sound fonts, this probably isn't for you unless you're really, really lazy and you can't be bothered to deal with sound fonts too much. But yeah, the, then the last, there's a couple of mistakes in this library, which are a little bit annoying. If you go from C to D in some libraries, it will be sample per octave, I feel. And the cutoff point is from C to D. So if you play a C and then go to D, you'll notice the attack is wildly different, especially in the lower octaves on this patch. Like this one has a, this one has a really dull attack, and then I go one note up. The attack is just suddenly like an octave higher, the same octave above. Like it will suddenly become like a really clicky attack. Like the way you can fix this is by increasing the sample offset so it skips the attack, or just increasing the attack on the envelope a little bit which doesn't perfectly fix it, depends a bit on the sample. But it's just a little bit of a lazy sampling job. Like just one sample per octave is a little bit e. It could have, it could have been better. Uh, beyond that, on some samples like the triangle from the C64, it will have a click on the start of some samples, just because the waveform starts at the wrong position. Just let's play a C major scale. So like on the F, you'll have like a click at the start of the note, which is just a shame. It's just poor sampling. You can just fix it by increasing the attack a little bit and it'll be done. Like that's fine. But still like you, you shouldn't need to do that. It's just a really small thing. Then also we have a couple patches in the tracker. But I found like a couple and this one especially like really got on my nerves when I was trying to work like the, the chord part out for this demo song because I was looking for nice roads and then I found this one and it just it just stops like I'm still holding the keys and then you go one patch up it sustains no problem so I don't know what it is you go one below sustains no problem so it's just a little bit inconsistent across the board here and there, which is a shame because it is overall a really nice library. But yeah, I thought you should be aware of these kind of things before you get into it so you know how to fix it and how to avoid these problems. Either way, that was Palm for JoshuaCasper.com and this was the review for the audio card PC by Impact Soundworks. I hope you're having a great day.